Okay, so yesterday was Ubuntu release day. I've looked at every single one of these already sort of in the beta period, but the one I sort of left out were two I left out. I left out Lubuntu, which is what we're going to have a look at today, the final release, and I left out Zubuntu as well. I was going to check Zubuntu out tonight as well, but I've just been reading sort of the release notes and it seems there's a bit of an issue with the AMD stuff and they suggest not using that until 20.04.1 and obviously I'm an AMD user, so I'm going to skip that for now. So what we're going to do is go straight forward with the installer here. Let me just switch over my mouse and keyboard input. Um, it should, there we go. Right, we're going to go straight through to the installer and unlike a lot of the other ones that use Ubiquiti, Lubuntu uses Calamares, which will be version 3.2.2.0. So we're going to go for a straight install, so we're just going to get our language up. Yep, 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 that's all good. And we're just going to test our keyboard very quickly. Yeah, that's fine. My keyboard's in quite an awkward place for these videos, so I sort of have to like contort my body a bit. Right, we're going to do just a whole disk install. So we're going to use, oh god, I don't know what disk swap. I'll tell you what, is there any disk programs in here? Disk. No, I'll tell you what, let's open up a terminal. Right. Let me just have a look at what's going on here. So we've got some stuff for my main Ubuntu stuff. Um, this one here, SDC, I think that's the one we're going to go for. Yes, okay, we're going to install onto SDC. I don't think there's anything on that. All right, let's go. So we want to go for SDC, wherever it is, which is the SanDisk. And we're going to do replaces the partition i'm going to do just a straight erase disk so as you can see there was nothing on it before and that's going to give us a efi partition for our boot of 300 megabytes and then it's going to do everything else on root for ubuntu so i think we're just going to go straight forward with that i'm going to guess that's going to make a swap file of around two gig as well all right so we're going to enter our user accounts this is such an awkward position hold on <laughs> Okay, we're going to log in automatically and click next. Let's just make sure that's all good. Okay, so what we're going to do is let that install and then I'll come back and then we'll be booting off disk and we'll go through sort of the re release notes together and just have a general look around. Like I say, the last time I did have a look at this was 18.10, which I think was the first sort of switch over to LXQT. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video and we'll be back in a moment. All right, so that was a very quick install, so we're going to go for a restart now. And um, we'll have to take the USB stick out and hopefully it's um, going to go to the correct part on the BIOS. So we're going to remove, press enter. So I've already got an Ubuntu install on here that I've upgraded from the beta with just the vanilla GNOME and also a Unity install. So we shall see um, the capture card as well will take a moment. There we go. Hopefully the boot sequence is all good. Okay, so we've got our Ubuntu 20.04, which is the GNOME slash Unity version. So I'm going to imagine this is the one we want for the Ubuntu 20.04. It is indeed. Right, as soon as we get in, we're going to have to jump into the um, sort of control center and set a unified view on the monitor, and then we'll have a little look around. Yeah, it's done something a bit crazy with the wallpaper there, so it's extended our display. So what's this? It's an update notifier. I'll tell you what, let me just sort the screen out and then we'll go through it all. All right, where's the monitor settings? Fast option, unified view, and then we should be good to go. Okay, right. So let's have a look. This is the new wallpaper I'm going to imagine. So the Ubuntu 20.04 seems to be a bit of a weird border around it. I don't know if that's because of this sort of screen going a bit funny or not. But that's the new wallpaper anyway. Okay, cool. So let's start with sort of what's new. So I've been reading the release notes and we have LXQT version 0.14. So let's pop open that so we've got lxqt version 0.14.1 so we're going to do a quick update in the um, we'll do this one actually we won't bother with the terminal for now so this is how you update when it first comes up lxqt sudo type in your password 
Okay, so that's just going to run it through there. I don't think it's got too much to do. No, upgrade finished. Lovely. Okay, so we'll have a look around and we'll see how we go. So I've not used this, as I say, since version 18.10. So this is PC Man FM, which is now going to be version, again, 0.14.1 QT. So we're going to close that now. We're going to make this a bit smaller. I think it's always a bit too big. And then we'll just change that to about like that. Right, first things first, I don't like this blue border, so what we're going to do is go into the about, um, to the appearance, LX appearance, and we're just going to sort out our theming. So I think we're going to leave it on arc dark, actually, not arc darker. I do like that that's the defaults there. And then what we're going to have to do is, I think it's probably in the LXQT theme, the Bintu arc. So how do we get rid of the blue? So widget style, QT style, yep, that's fine. Oh, I can't remember. I'll tell you what, let's do that. So it uses open box as well for the sort of Windows management part of things. So let's go into the open box stuff now and see if we can sort that blue out. Open box settings. Lubuntu Arc, appearance, window. So let's just go for, say, yeah, so that changes that. So if we've got normal Arc, maybe, that would get rid of the blue. Arc Dark, there we go. So that should mean we don't have that blue border now. Perfect. Right, let's close that and let's close that. I'm just going to take a quick screenshot and then change this wallpaper. I wonder if it's got the default screenshot on this keyboard. Let's give it a go. There we go. So we're just going to save that onto the desktop. Save desktop. Right, so we're now using Firefox version 75, I do believe. Let's just crack it open here, helping about. Version 74.0, lovely. So what we're going to do is get the release notes up here and just have a little run through it together. So we're going to open that, but before we do that, I just want to change this wallpaper. Desktop preferences, browse. Um, we haven't really got anything in there, have we? I'll tell you what, let's download a new one. So let's just get something nice and simple, actually. Let's see if I've got any of my externals plugged in here. Pictures. Let's go for this. Pictures, paste. And I'm just going to make that our wallpaper. So there's no right click make wallpaper. So what we'll have to do is right click on the desktop again and then go to browse, pictures, um, home, Tyler, pictures. Okay, cool. Okay, I can deal with that, that's a bit nicer there. What we're also going to do is put our panel to the top. Let's configure the panel. So as I say, it's been a while since I've used LXQT. I can see a bit of screen tearing as well, so I might have to see what's going on there. So we want that at the top, top of the desktop. Perfect, okay. So it uses Compton, I do believe, for the screen compositor. So it might be that we can play around with Compton to get the screen tone to work, or we can just do it with our Xorg file, which is probably the way we're going to go, actually. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Let's go through these release notes. And there it is. So we've got LXQT, yeah, we've seen that. QT 5.12.8, long-term release. Mozilla is now, uh, Firefox Mozilla is now 75. New LibreOffice is now the latest version of 6.4.2. Let's just pop open a LibreOffice writer. And we don't want tips. Click OK and go to help and about. And as you can see there, version 6.4.2.2. What we're also going to do is just install HTOP. That uh, already has it, so we don't need to. Ah, so it didn't make a swap file, so we could make a swap file later if we wanted to. Huh, I thought it might have made one by default. A lot of the others do, but obviously not this one. Not to worry. So we're using about 1.25 gig at the moment. CPU utilization is very low on all cores. We're not even touching 1% there, so that's nice to see. So let's keep going. So LibreOffice, yeah. So VLC is now version 3.0.9.2. So I'm going to imagine that's your default media player. Yes, it is. So VLC. Helping about version 3. Oh, where are we gone? 
version 3.0.9.2 and then what we're going to do is just go through the other applications now so Featherpad is your text editor also comes with Vim like I said Compton is your screen compositor KCalc for your calculator PC Man FM for your files manager in games it has 2048 QT LX image in graphics and LibreOffice Draw as well as screen grab and screen light in internet you use Blue Devil for your Bluetooth stuff, Firefox for your web browser, Q Transmission, so Transmission QT for torrents. And let's keep going. Um, Trujita, so this has also been updated, so this is their sort of email client. I've not spent too much time with it, you know, so I might actually use this off camera and see how we go. It's quite a simple sort of email client now as far as I can tell. Let's click cancel for a minute. So this is the sort of default setup I'm going to imagine. You get your email accounts to the left here, and then your emails will come here with subject, from, date, and size. And obviously you can click these, and it will do it by that order, and then it will tell you what app the um, attachments you have. And then if we just go into About, uh, it says 7 .0 0.7 there. So let's just go back to here. I'm sure I saw something about Trajita. I'm probably saying that wrong as well. Yep, so here we go, that's version 0 0.7. Okay, so we're also using Discover Center 5.18.4 for an easy graphical way to install some software. So let's open that. Oh, that's your sources. So let's cancel that. And let's open up Discover. If you've used KDE or something like that, you'll know Discover quite well. So I'm going to imagine we've got snaps out of the box. So if we go snap list, we do. And I think uh, they've got Flatpak as well now. So not on this one, but on some of the other event whose Flatpak is supported, I do believe. So we have no Flatpaks installed out of the box and Flatpaks not installed. So if we go to here and let's just say Caden Live, we should get the snap and the um, the dev package now. So this is the dev package from the repo. So then this one, oh dear, let's do that again. So that was the, was that the one we clicked? No. <laughs> so this is the snap now. So as I say, it's got the snap plugin already ready for your store. Okay, what I'm going to do is do a reboot and then get a sort of RAM reading and I'm probably going to see if I can sort out this screen tearing as well because I'm pretty sure I'm getting some quite gnarly screen tear in there. Invest as little as one pound in the world's leading company. Yeah, I can already see we're getting some quite drastic screen tearing. I don't know if the, yeah, it should capture that on OBS if you can see that in the middle there. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is sort the screen tearing out and then we'll come back with a fresh sort of RAM reading and just sort of have another little look around, see if anything we've missed. And we'll, um, yeah, we'll wrap it up there. But it's, it's feeling very light and snappy. Um, we don't have side by side snapping. I wonder if we do have a keyboard shortcut. Not that I can see, but that's how we can go to different desktops. So control alt and right and left. So it uses Openbox. Um, where do they put their RC file? So I do have my RC file from when I first used this that I edited the shortcuts for. So I might copy that over so we can get some keyboard shortcuts for Windows snapping. Let me just have a look if it's in here somewhere. Is it in dot config maybe? open box here we go so here's your lxqt rc file so you can change a lot of stuff here and sort of do some keyboard shortcuts so i have got my lx i have got my rc file i think on a cloud somewhere so i might copy that over as well and get that all working i don't know if too much has changed we might have to have a look at that before we do that though right i'm going to stop this recording and then hopefully we'll come back have a look at things and i'll sort the screen tearing out okay i've just rebooted and we've done some stuff on off screen to see if we can sort this screen tearing out and I do believe that we are now tear free don't worry about that pause that will happen when you pause it but when it's actually playing we have no screen tearing
lovely so that was quite a simple process all we had to do was edit the um, XOR well create a radium comp and then edit that so if you want to see what that looks like it's just a fairly simple one there I'm sure you've had to use that before I'm not too sure what it would be the steps on the video or sort of I think Intel if you've got inbuilt sort of Intel graphics it's sort of a fairly similar process but obviously it's Intel conf okay so what we're going to do now is get rid of that we're going to install plank because I like a plank at the bottom and then we're going to reboot see how much RAM we're using at boot and then we're going to leave it at that so what I'm going to do is remove something from this panel so how do we configure this panel to remove Windows buttons widgets so application menu is there desktop switcher brilliant I like that at the right so we'll have that there and then what I want to do is remove the task manager so we're going to get rid of that okay we might need to have a spacer or something so let's go to plus and do we have a spacer we do indeed so we're going to chuck this one in there and then hopefully if we put that just before the desktop switcher and then expand it there we go and then if we make it invisible Boom, so that line's gone now, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is open up Plank. And then I'm gonna use that for my programs to launch and not launch. Right, so we might wanna enable Compton. I can see that the compositor's not actually on, as far as I can tell there. No, so the compositor's not on. So if we open up Compton, there you go. You can see now the zoom would work. I don't use the zoom though. Okay, so we can add Compton as well to our auto start as well as planks. So what we're going to do is bring that down a bit, remove that. Um, yeah, that looks fine to me. So now I want to remove, I mean, add some things to the auto start. Then we're going to reboot, see how much RAM I've now managed to use all together at a fresh boot. And we're going to end it there though. But I do actually, I much prefer Lubuntu with LXQT. I remember saying that in the 18.10 video when I first saw it. Now, all I've got to do is remember how to add things to auto start on here. So let's go back to the control center, um, configuration center, sorry. Okay, so it's probably in session settings. Yep, here we go. So I wonder if it's got any entries for Compton on here yet. No, so what we're gonna do is add an entry for Compton. Should be fine like that. I wonder if you can just search for applications as well. Yeah, so we're just going to do that, and we're going to do the same for Plank. And now what we're going to do is do a reboot. Um, some settings, yeah, that's fine. We're going to do a reboot, get a RAM reading, and then I'm going to spend a few days with this, and then we, I might do a follow-up, and I'm going to spend a few days with all of the others now that they've got their final release. Okay, let's reboot this one. And we're going to record the rebooting to see how quickly it starts up. We will just have to end... Um, hit enter on the grub screen other than that we've got auto login right let's see how quickly we go All right let's run the clock now now there we go um yeah fairly quick so we've got plank ready to start up and compton has also started up so let's open up htop there we go all together we're using under 600 megabytes we're at 446 megabyte ram and the cp utilization as we say is very low indeed so i might also install an application launcher like albert but i think for the most part i like it um, I think this is one of the sort of lesser loved versions of Ubuntu or the flavours if you like. In fact, I might be interested to look at the stats on that. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you want to try this one out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.